Hi there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover skinning ASP.NET Storefront ML uh, 9 and, and ASP.NET Storefront Multi-Store. Um, so let me just jump right into it. Uh, this is uh, an out-of-the-box site, as it'll appear when you first install uh, ASP.NET Storefront. And we're just going to modify a couple things today and, and talk about all the different pieces of ASP.NET Storefront and all the different components that make up a skin and how you can change the look of your website. Um, so this is what the site looks like and and over here I've got the files that actually make up the website. So this is what the, the site structure looks like. Uh, I'm inside the web folder and from here you know if I scroll through you can see all of the various ASPX pages that make up a storefront site. Um, but for the most part, when we refer to a skin, we're talking about what you'll find in the app templates folder and the app themes folder. Um, so a skin is actually, ever since uh, version 9, uh, has been split between these two folders. So if you open up app templates, You'll see a few different skins in here, and including uh, this actually isn't a skin, this component art stuff. But um, and skin one is what your site will use by default. Your site, if it's been modified since you first installed it, will may very well use a different skin than skin one, and we'll go over that in just a minute. So I wanted to take you into the app templates folder and kind of show you that, and then. Inside of skin one, you'll find XML packages. Um, so um, I'm not going to go into what XML packages are here, but those are XML packages specific to your skin. And, um, and then really there's quite a few files in here, but uh, the important ones are, well, the most important one here is going to be your template.master file. This file actually controls the template and and kind of, well, let me point at the actual template here. Um, the template basically makes up the everything but the content area. So the, the parts of the, the website that stay the same from one page to the next makes up the template. So that's what we're going to be doing a lot of our work with today is the template.master. Um, so I'm going to go back up to the app themes directory and show you what's in there. Again, you're going to see a few different skins, those three different skins that we saw in the app templates folder. Um, and what belongs in here are just image files and style sheets. So in the app theme skin one folder you'll find all the images that are specific to the skin and any style sheets that might uh, might be applied to the skin and actually in a default installation you'll only see uh, style.css featured styles is actually something uh, a third party component that I added in okay that pretty much covers the structure of the site uh, so now what I'd like to do uh, is create a new skin so I'm going into app templates and I'm gonna copy skin one it's always a good idea to to have a backup of the default skin so that you can refer to it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and whoops change this to skin two There we go. And then when you create a new skin, you've got to do it in both places, both the app templates and the app themes. So I'll just copy and paste. And you can see this one's a little bit larger because of the images involved. Okay, so we've got two skins. They're identical right now. And we're going to work with skin two today. So now that we've got two skins, uh, I need to set up the site to actually use that second skin rather than the first skin. 
Um, they're going to look identical, but that's okay. So let me show you how to do that. In version 9, you'll want to go to Store Maintenance. And the same is true with Multi-Store. And then click on Domains here. And you'll want to click on the store you're using. And if it's just plain old version 9, then you'll only have one store to choose from. And then in the drop down, once you add that new folder, that Skin 2 folder, you'll see it appear here as one of your options in the drop down. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Skin 2 and save that. And then it's always a good idea when you do make a change like that to reset the cache. And skins actually um, use cookies as well. So another thing I'm going to do is clear out my cookies. I've got a little utility that helps me do that. Um, that just kind of assures that you're using the proper skin because a skin can be tied to a cookie. Okay, so now we're up and running on skin 2 and we're ready to start modifying it.